So we're here with uh, U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota in the, the posh basement of the uh, co-auditorium. In which we know the fundamentals music class is canceled today. It, it says it out there, but at least that gave us space, I guess. We'll, we'll try to teach the, maybe the fundamentals of caucus politics. I don't okay, know. that'll be good. Uh, I want to ask you a question first off about climate change. You know, uh, a lot a lot of times legislation dealing with, dealing with that is opposed by farmers and ranchers, they, they feel the effects of extreme weather, but they're worried about the regulations, they're worried about the impact of federal intervention. How do you convince those folks to uh, support meeting this threat? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, first of all, I see our farmers as part of the solution. Uh, our farmers are stewards of their land, and you've got a situation where um, the land and green and growing things is going to be good for reducing carbon. And we did a pilot in the Farm Bill on carbon sequestration to reward farmers who maybe plant winter crop or do other things um, that are helpful. And that's a pilot now, but I think it could get to be a really big deal uh, to help, just like we do with some of these other conservation programs. Uh, so that's one thing. I think the second thing is we've all seen the cost of climate change, $500 billion a year now flooding of farmers' lands, and I think we all have to do this together. And I put out my ideas to get us back into the International Climate Change Agreement, go back to the clean power rules, which were um, had a lot of support, actually, and were a compromise that the Obama administration had worked out. And the third thing is the gas mileage standards, and then sweeping legislation and working with all the groups to get that introduced. Um, and I think it is re very realistic to get to carbon neutral by 2050. And that is my plan, and that's what I'd like to do. And then you make sure that uh, you help people once you put a price on carbon. There's many ways to do it, uh, including a renewable electricity standard, um, that you make sure you're helping areas uh, that will see a transition in their kind of energy. Now, Iowa, wind, right? One of the top wind states, and as well as doing pretty well with solar. So there could be some real gains as well uh, for states like Iowa and my home state of Minnesota uh, that have not produced as much coal and are much more focused on the renewable energy side of things. There's been some concern that the Trump administration sort of announced this abrupt uh, decision to move a lot of the USDA operations to Kansas City. Uh, some scientists have quit. Yeah. Uh, they're losing some expertise. If, if you become president, how do you address that situation. Well, well, I would never. Have already have moved and yeah, I'm well aware of that. I was actually involved in that early on, um, voicing my concerns, opposing it. You know, we like Kansas City. That's not the issue. The issue is that uh, there were many, many people doing very important work on climate change and other things and studying things that were part of that group. And in today's world, spouses have jobs too. It's much harder just to move a whole office with very little notice and expect that people are going to move. And it, they've done that with some other departments in interior. And it always seems like they're doing it to people that are researching or are doing air, things uh, that would be helpful to moving our country forward. So I'm very concerned about it. I think it's wrong. Um, and I think when I come in as president, if I have the honor, um, I would look at that v right away. And in my first 100 days, I put out a whole plan because I think you need to have plans, but you need to have deadlines of over 100 things you can do without Congress. I love Congress, but there are things you can legally do without Congress. And looking back at some of these changes they made are some of them. I want, I want to follow up on that. When, um, would you look to... Um expand the bounds of executive power? Are you talking about things that are within um, the precedent of what presidents have done? No, I wouldn't expand the bounds, but what I would do is there's a surprising number of things that you can do. Obviously, reviewing some of the things the Trump administration did by executive order, um, but there's a lot of other things you can do um, that haven't been done, uh, like the uh, boyfriend loophole with guns. That's a bill I carry, but a president could actually do that herself, and that's the rule where people are convicted of domestic abuse, a serious offense, and if, they are, if they've been convicted of it with their, husband, with their wife, against their wife, or against someone they live with, then they can't go out and get an AK-47. But if it's their girlfriend, they can. And half the domestic homicides involve dating relationships. So that's one example. A president could actually do that herself. And I have numerous things you can do, including getting back in the International Climate Change Agreement, um, and including, and this one's interesting for Iowa voters, including getting a waiver uh, to bring in 
um, less expensive drugs from other countries, and that's something else that you can do. Okay. And I, that's one of my main things. I have that bill with Bernie and with other people, and uh, actually Grassley is now on that bill with me. Um, let me switch to another topic. Um, you've been a supporter of steel tariffs, which are perceived as benefiting Minnesota. Um, people in some other states say steel tariffs are bad for their companies and their mm -hmm. workers. As president, you would represent all Americans. Would you mm -hmm. still um, push to maintain and increase steel tariffs? Um, no, I would push to review all the tariffs that the president has put in place, and I think he's gone way overboard at great expense uh, to some manufacturing as well as, obviously, to our farmers. Remember, Minnesota has... Um, as a good microcosm of the country in that we have our iron ore mines, that's what my grandpa used to do, but we also have farms. And I would have done a much t more targeted approach with the steel tariffs. And what's really interesting about this is the last year or two, two years, I'd say, of the Obama administration, we were starting to see problems with the mines closing down. We brought the president's chief of staff up to northern Minnesota. Great changes were made, uh, started enforcing steel dumping laws. We passed a bill on it. And literally within a year, the mine started to open again before President Trump came in. And then we saw that continued. So you could do this without these broad steel tariffs, especially when he did it with Canada and Mexico, which was a big mistake. Um, so that is, uh, I would look at it, I would review everything, and I think you have to have much more targeted tariffs. And we've seen a lot of other things close down in Minnesota because of these tariffs, as you have in Iowa. And he is literally treating our farmers like poker chips in one of his bankrupt casinos, as well as adding up debt. In a state like Iowa, I think people care about that. They believe in fiscal management and in being careful about things, and that's not what this guy is doing. So one of my pleas in a general election as I look at our blue wall states, and the blue wall is Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and I would add Iowa, of states that we lost to Donald Trump, but then came roaring back in different ways in 2018 where people wanted to check and balance on this president. So in this field of candidates, you fall probably closer to the center. Uh, so that's great for a general election. I mean, that <laughs> candidates in the center usually do better. Uh, but how do you sell that in this mm -hmm. primary field? How do you sort of begin to make a move up in the polls and, and, and sell that centrist approach? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we have to win. And we don't just want to win by eking it by. We want to win big. And to win big, you get your fired up base, which we have, but you also bring in independents and moderate Republicans. You could see that in Iowa in these races of Sydney, Axneys, and Abbeys. People came over that had maybe voted for Donald Trump. You could see that in Wisconsin, uh, where Scott Walker lost, and you could certainly see it in Pennsylvania in this last election. And those candidates fit their districts or their states. That's what I am. Uh, Laura Kelly won in Kansas. And if you want to bring people with you and not just win, but win big, that's the right thing to do. But it goes further than that. I think we need a president that isn't just governing for half this country, but governing for the entire country. And you want someone, and this is my plea during the debate, and I'll make it now to your Iowa voters, um, is that if you are tired of the noise and the nonsense, and you are looking for uh, someone uh, who is going to be the president for all of America, um, you have a home with me. Uh, because uh, you have extremes in our politics, but I'm someone that over and over again, I've passed over 100 bills where I'm the lead Democrat, uh, more than uh, my other opponents who are currently in the U.S. Senate uh, when they've been in the Senate. And I've done that simply by figuring out the common ground and getting it done. These big ticket items, climate change, immigration reform, bridging the rural-urban divide, infrastructure, mental health, health care. You want someone that can actually get it done and bringing a coalition with them that stands with them when they're governing. Can I ask one more policy question yeah. before I have to let you go? Um, there's been some interest in your home state, state legislature in Minnesota, of legalizing uh, marijuana for adult purchase. Do you support the federal government lifting the ban on uh, cannabis? Uh, yes, okay. I do. Um, and I think that also probably the best way we're going to get there is um, changing some of the federal rules, yes, but also state by state by state. So you can figure out what Colorado um, has done or what Washington state has done, what has worked safety-wise for kids, taxation-wise. I mean, there's going to be whole schemes that develop in these states, and I think it's sometimes good to see what those states do um, as it spreads across the country.
Thank you, Senator, for your time. Well, it was great to be here and Thanks. great to be back in Cedar Thank Rapids. You very, much. very good. Thank you. Thank you.